is risen. Hallelujah. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, just a couple brief announcements here before we get started. I forgot completely last week, because last week, can you believe last week was Easter? It seems like 100 years ago already. But uh, I forgot to mention last week that we do have a voters meeting Tuesday at 7 p.m. this Tuesday. So in two days, 7 p.m. voters meeting. Uh, conduct the business of the church, uh, authorize payments and good stuff like that. And so uh, 7 p.m. here at the church, Tuesday for voters meeting. Doug's going to have a little thing to say after the service uh, regarding the soup luncheon today. And we also have uh, spring cleaning. Uh, that's going to begin around 3.30 this afternoon. Uh, there was going to be some stuff right out of school, but that's all outside stuff. So with the weather prediction, where we've narrowed it down to just inside here in the church uh, for this afternoon, 3.30 to 5 o'clock. Uh, cleaning supplies will be provided, and then after we're done with the cleaning time, there'll be some pizza and salads, and, and I forget what else. Let's see here. Pizza and, and salads and desserts and drinks uh, there. So a busy, busy day at Zion Lutheran Church this morning. So let us begin the divine service with the scene of our opening hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Greetings in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We welcome you to the Sunday, April 24th, 2022, worship service at Zion Lutheran Church, Lincoln, Illinois. Participating in this morning's broadcast are Dennis Knauer, Linda McEwen, and Brian Featon. Our organist is Dora Thompson, and our opening hymn is number 549, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Hymn number 549, found in the Lutheran Service Book. Matt and Lindsay Bodeman are sponsoring the flowers on the altar to the glory of God in celebration of Easton's 11th birthday. Marvin Bartman is sponsoring the radio broadcast today to the glory of God in memory of Court Bartman.
Let us rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But But if if we we confess confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive forgive our sins sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. Most Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue now with the psalm of the day. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. And he established them forever and ever. He gave a decree, and it shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy wind fulfilling his word. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Beasts and all livestock, creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth. Young men and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above the earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his saints. For the people of Israel who are near to him, praise the Lord. Glory Glory be to to the the Father, Father, and to the Son, Son, and to the the Holy Ghost, Ghost, as it was in the beginning, beginning, is now. now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, Let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. The first reading for this, the second Sunday of Easter, is from the book of Acts, the fifth chapter, beginning at the twelfth verse. Now many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people by the hands of the apostles, and they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared join them, but the people held them in high esteem. And more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, that as Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on some of them. The people also gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all healed. But the high priest rose up and all who were with him, that is, the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, they arrested the apostles and put them in the public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and began to teach. Now when the high priest came and those who were with him, they called together the council and all the senate of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came, they did not find them in the prison. So they returned and reported. We found the prison securely locked and the guards standing at the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now when the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these words, they were greatly perplexed about them, wondering what this would come to. And someone came and told them, Look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain with the officers went and brought them. But not by force, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest questioned them, saying, We strictly charge you not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us? But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at, at his right hand and as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Our catechetical review, in regards to the Lord's Prayer, what is the fourth petition? Give us this day our daily bread. What does this mean? God certainly gives daily bread to everyone without our prayers, even to all evil people. But we pray in this petition that God would lead us to realize this and to receive our daily bread with thanksgiving. What is meant by daily bread? Daily, daily bread, bread includes, includes everything, everything that, that has, has to, to do with the support and needs of the body, such as food, drink, clothing, shoes, house, home, land, animals, money, goods, a devout husband or wife, devout children, devout workers, devout and faithful rulers, good government, good weather, peace, health, self-control, good reputation, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the like. The epistle reading is from the book of Revelation, the first chapter beginning at the fourth verse. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, 
Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings and on earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priest to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye shall see him, even those who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, your brother and partner in the tribulation and the kingdom and the patient endurance that are in Christ Jesus, was on the island called Patmos, on account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, write what you see in a book and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamum, and to Thyatira, and to Sardis, and to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. And then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, and on turning I saw seven golden lampstands, And in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest. The hairs of his head were white like wool, as white as snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze, refined in a furnace. His voice was like the roar of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars. From his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the shining sun in full strength. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead, but he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and Hades. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the singing of the Alleluia. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. And put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our common Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe believe in in God God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, if there are any children who'd like to come forward for a children's message, they're invited to do so. morning. I have a sneaking suspicion, more than a sneaking suspicion. I'm confident that your parents love you. How, how does that get to you? I mean, like, How was mom and dad's love delivered? Ah, they take care of you. So food, clothes, shoes, right? Meals, all those good. They take you to the doctor, do stuff like that. Yes. How else is that delivered? How does it, how does it come to you? Anybody here ever gotten a hug? Okay, there are hugs. <laughs> hugs, how about just words? Words and love you. Okay, so now we're in church, right? And we keep talking about the love of God, the love of Jesus. So we ask ourselves the question, how does this love get to you? I mean, if you turned around and you looked there on the top of the altar, there you see uh, Mary, Jesus' mother, and John, the apostle. Remember when Jesus said, behold your mother, behold your son. So there's Mary and John, so that John is going to take care of Mary. So Jesus took care of his mom even while he was on the cross. And we see what Jesus did for us. He earned on the cross forgiveness of sins, life, salvation, heaven. He earned that for you, for all of you. But it gets delivered to you. How does it get delivered to you? What does the church do? The church does things. It, 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 exists for a reason. It's to give you and deliver to you the very things that Jesus earned on the cross. So when did you become a member of God's family, Aiden? Yes, through baptism. So what Jesus did on the cross is brought to you through baptism. Right? Your sins are washed away and you are made a child. There are other things too. There are several other things in which what Jesus did on the cross is delivered to you. Well, we had it yet last Sunday. What meal? You said take care of us. We, moms and dads, they give us meals. They make us, what meal does Jesus give to us? What meal did he say? Do this. The Lord's Supper, yes. 
do this for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. So we have the sacraments, right? Baptism and the Lord's Supper that give us the forgiveness of sins, give you the forgiveness of your sins. This morning, if I was to go back in the service, and take a look. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, what we have done and what we have left done, undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are all guilty, that is for sure, right? We justly deserve your temporal now and eternal punishment, but we say we're sorry for them, we're very sorry for them, and we're begging you for the sake of that on the cross that you would have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will, walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. And what does the pastor say? in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ. In this absolution, I would say this morning, Almighty God has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So also in words, we deliver to you the forgiveness of your sins is, is like the king telling his messenger, you have the authority, my authority, to go out and proclaim to the kingdom thus and such. The Lord Jesus breathed on his disciples and said, whoever sins you send away, they are sent away. And whoever sins you say, Stay on somebody. They stay on somebody. This morning as you confessed your sins before your heavenly father, your sins were sent away. What Jesus did on the cross was delivered to you today in words, the confession and the absolution. And that is what we are doing here. This is why we assemble together to have delivered to us the good gifts that Jesus earned on the cross, I know it looks ordinary. I know it looks normal when we do it so often we get used to it, but this here is holy, sacred, divine, heavenly. There is something here that we can't see with human eyes. All these people are also part of your family, the family of God who receive the gifts that Jesus earned on the cross. And in that receiving, they also have eternal life, just like you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your son Jesus to earn salvation for us. And now we pray and ask that that salvation would be received by us in faith to the salvation of our souls and life everlasting. Grant us all your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Kids, thank you for coming down. Thank you for those answers you gave today. Appreciate it. And if you would, please head back to your families in the pews. And we continue with the singing of the next hymn. The strife is over. The battle is done. The hymn of the day is hymn number 464, The Strife is O'er, The Battle Done, hymn number 464, found in the Lutheran Service Book.
The sermon text this morning from the Gospel of John. Jesus came among them and said to them, Peace be with you. The words of our text. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Liturgical responses, peace be with you and with thy spirit. The peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. The peace that passes all understanding be in your hearts and minds to the one true faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen, we respond. But, but why? What is this faith? What is this peace that we speak of? What has Jesus done for us? Jesus appears in the upper room where the disciples are, are holed up and they're hiding for fear of the Jews. And he says to them, the very first thing he says to them is, peace be with you. When we hear those words, how can we not but help think of the nativity of our Lord? Just so few months ago, Christmas had, has passed for us. For unto you this day, said the angels, is born in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and peace among men with whom he is pleased. Peace. This is what Jesus has come to bring to all of humanity. And we speak of this faith, this faith that we closed each sermon with. What is this faith? The faith is this, that we look upon Jesus as the fulfiller of all the Old Testament prophecies. Jesus is the seed of the woman who will crush the serpent's head. He is the Messiah. He is the sacrifice of atonement. We trust that he is the very one who will repair the relationship between God and humanity, between heaven and earth. This is exactly what the angel's song tells us. Atonement for the sins of the world will be made. Heaven and earth are joined together in peace. Faith is in Jesus and that he has done these things and worked these things on our behalf. And so Jesus appears to the disciples and with his word he delivers to them the peace that he has earned. He gives them peace. Peace, and remember the context of what is going on here. What is the context? They're in this upper room. They're hiding for the fear of the Jews. Jesus stands right among them. He doesn't come through the window. He doesn't come through the door. He's just there all of the sudden. So you got to go back just a few week, week and a half, something like that. Lazarus had died. Jesus proposes to the disciples that they go to Lazarus' tomb. And the disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and you're wanting to go back there again? And there's some more conversation, and shortly thereafter, Jesus says to them, Lazarus has died, and for your sake I'm glad that I wasn't there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. So Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, very important words, let us go that we may die with him. They had every intent on going to Jerusalem and dying with Jesus. On Good Friday, though, we remember that Peter had denied Jesus three times. The rest of the disciples who trudged to Jerusalem with him to die with him, they did not do that. They were scattered and they watched his death from a distance. And now this Jesus whom they ran away from, this Jesus whom they denied, this Jesus is right in front of them. And one can only imagine the shock and the fear that they were experiencing as Jesus stood there in front of them. Instead, though, of unleashing his anger upon them, what does he do? He gives to them the very thing that he was born to give. He gives to them peace. Jesus speaks the absolution to them. It's exactly what he's doing here. When Jesus says peace, he is absolving them of their sins. The same thing that is done for you each Sunday, Jesus has done for the disciples. For all that you did, disciples, for all that you did not do, you are forgiven. 
you are forgiven. Outwardly, the disciples are not being persecuted yet. They are not being stoned. They are not being nailed to crosses or, or such things happening to them right now. They, no one yet has thrown them into prison. But inwardly, they are a mess. Inwardly, they are a wreck. There is no peace within them. There is no rest within them. Luther, on his, in his sermon on the peace of God, he writes, Amid their fear and their anguish, the Lord comes and quiets them and makes them glad so that their fear is removed. Not by removing the danger. This is so important. This is so wise that Dr. Luther has said, Jesus doesn't take away the danger. It's not what he does. He doesn't remove the danger, but it's rather that their hearts are no more afraid. The malice of the Jews is not taken away. Outwardly, everything remains the same, but the disciples are changed on the inside, receiving boldness and joy so as to declare and be able to declare, we have seen the Lord. He quiets their hearts so that they become bold and cheerful and fearless. And that's a good lesson for us to learn and good solid theology for us to know also. So often we seek peace in the absence of turmoil. We seek peace in the absence of strife. We seek peace in the presence of plenty and comfort. Such is the source of much of our turmoil and hopelessness is this, that we confuse outward peace with inner peace. This is not the peace that Jesus comes to bring. Jesus did not promise you a car. Jesus did not promise an easy life. Jesus says, if they do this to me, just imagine what they're going to do to you. So this peace that passes all understanding is not a physical peace, so to speak. Peace of God is that which quiets the heart, not in times when there is no adversity, but specifically in the midst of much outward adversity, trial, trouble, and yes, much hopelessness. How often have I heard commented lately that the young people today in the world seem to be so hopeless. There's not much to live for. They have a vast hopelessness. Maybe the confusion that we have brought upon our culture is that everything must be smooth and perfect. It won't be and it will never be. But for the Christian, this peace that we have is the peace of inward comfort. Outwardly, we will still have the trials, the tribulations, and the troubles that the world brings upon us. There is a difference between worldly peace and spiritual peace. Earthly peace comes from a removal of trouble, so that peace returns. Just take the problem away, make it go away. Christian or spiritual peace turns the thing about, so that outwardly, the evil things remain. There are enemies, there is poverty, there is sickness, there is sin, there is death. There is still the devil about us. These things are there, and they are never, ever going to go away this side of heaven. But inside, there is a peace, a strength, a comfort of the heart, so that the heart is bold in the face of evil. And therefore, it is a peace, as we say, that passes all understanding, and that means it transcends our senses. When the Spirit comes, the Spirit lets outward adversity remain but strengthens the person, making the timid fearless, the trembling bold, changing the troubled conscience into a quiet and a peaceful conscience. This is the peace we receive from Christ. So, the question is, do your sins trouble you? Does adversity bother you? Does death terrify you? Then look to Christ who died for your sake and who rose again and who conquered every evil for you. Remember Thomas, who didn't just doubt. Thomas disbelieved. Until I see him and touch him, I will not believe. And Jesus didn't ask Thomas to stop doubting. Jesus said, Thomas, stop being disbelieving. Right? And what did Jesus say to Thomas before anything else? Peace be with you. The same thing he said to the other disciples. Thomas, you are absolved of your doubts. You are absolved of your unbelief. You are absolved of your sins. Peace be with you. 
Stop disbelieving and be believing. Jesus shows unto Thomas and the disciples the incredibly high price which with he has purchased this peace. His nail-pierced hands, his side torn, his spear-torn side, it is those holy wounds that proclaim to us that God the Father is at peace with us. They fled these disciples when Jesus was betrayed. They had given up their faith. But what do they hear in exchange for this? Peace be with you. That's what they hear. The scars, the work of Jesus, has taken their guilt away, and Jesus, through his words, delivers peace to them. What is it, then, that we have in holy communion? In a divine miracle, by a divine union, the body and blood of Christ are given in, with, and under the bread and the wine of the sacrament of the altar. It's as if Christ were standing before you at the sacrament of the altar saying, stick out your hand, touch my flesh, feel the nail marks, put your fingers here in my side, see me, touch me, and be at peace. And because Christ is really and truly present in the sacrament of the altar, and we have touched and seen and received that peace, we can also say, along with Simeon, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, because sins are forgiven. Peace, because absolution has come in the flesh. Then the Lord Jesus, no longer the little Lord Jesus, asleep in the hay, but the Lord of power and might breathes on his disciples and gives them a commission, a mission, the office of the keys. If you send, receive the Holy Spirit, he says, if you send away the sins of anyone, they are sent. And if you retain them, they are retained. Right there in the office of the keys is the work of the church. The church is not a self-help organization. There are plenty of those who do abundantly good work. The church is about confession and absolution. The church is about sending away the sins of those who are repentant and retaining upon them the sins of those who are unrepentant. What amazing authority, divine authority, is given to we mere mortals to distribute the peace that is won on the cross, to distribute the work of our Lord Jesus Christ. For forgiveness was earned by Jesus and now this forgiveness is distributed to you through the absolution and through the sacraments. We have the authority here to distribute the peace of Christ, the peace that our sin is forgiven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. When sin is forgiven here, it is just as valid and certain before the throne of God as if our God said it to, him, to us himself. I implore you then, to believe the words of absolution. For if your pastor says your sins are forgiven and you do not believe it, it is like saying in your heart and your soul, who knows if it is true? Who knows if God really does mean what he says? To think such would be to forfeit true peace. And such unbelief would damn a person. For such a person would charge God and his word with lying. So what is church? What is church? We are nothing less than the messengers of the king, the messenger of freedom and peace with God. The peace of sins forgiven is what we deal in, what we proclaim, and what we offer, and what we deliver. This peace rests in the heart, and in the face of earthly trial and tribulation, it stands strong. This is the peace out of the cross, and we know that this peace is true because Jesus is risen from the grave. Amen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. And now may that peace which passes all understanding be in your hearts and your minds through the one true faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us now all rise for our prayers.
Almighty God, who has sent your only begotten Son to die for our sins and gives us peace with you, we pray you to give us continually great faith in Jesus so that trusting in his work on the cross for our forgiveness, we would ever have that peace which surpasses all human comprehension and withstands all human testing. Lord, in your mercy. As we pray for divine peace, O Christ, we pray also for those who need peace in times of trial, especially sickness and illness. Grant, we pray you, strength and healing to Patty Arnfeld as she recovers from hip surgery. Grant that she heal quickly and smoothly. And we ask also caring and devotion heart, a caring and devoted heart be delivered to her husband, John, as he cares for her. Here are our prayers also for the numerous sick whom we now name in our hearts and in our minds. Lord, in your mercy. Hear us, O Christ, as we ask you to comfort Dawn Steiner and her family as they grieve the death of her nephew, as they go this week to the visitation and to the funeral of this nephew. May they keep your word in their heart to comfort them and sustain them in this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy. Dear God, as the seasons turn, so turns the minds of those who farm to planting. As equipment is made ready and fields are worked, we ask you to grant safety to our farmers. And also, dear God, as prices increase, so too does the cost of fertilizer and such things that farmers need to put food on the tables of our nation. Give, we ask you, wise and discerning minds to the farmers as they consider their finances, extra bounty to make up what will be lost in Ukraine and a profitable year at the end of the season. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Please be seated for the reception of our gifts and offerings. You have been sharing in morning worship at Zion Lutheran Church, 205 Pulaski Street in Lincoln, Illinois, and just heard Reverend Mark Thompson deliver this morning's message. If you cannot be physically present, join us every Sunday morning on the radio at 8 a.m. over WLLM, 1370 a.m. or WLLM 105.3 FM, or on Facebook Live or on the internet at www.zlclinc.org. Zion is a member congregation of the Worldwide Fellowship of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. If you are without a church home, we invite you to become a part of the Zion family. If we may assist you in any way, please call us at 217-732-3946 or write to us at Zion Lutheran Church, 205 Pulaski Street, Lincoln, Illinois, 62656. Zion also offers a premier education with a Christian worldview for children from age 3 through the 8th grade at Zion Lutheran School. If you would like more information concerning our school, please contact the school office at 217-732-3977. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us now rise with the singing of the offertory.
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, grant to your church your Holy Spirit and the wisdom that comes down from above, that your word may not be bound, but have free course and be preached to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, so that in steadfast faith we may serve you and in the confession of your name abide unto the end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and grant thee his peace. The closing hymn is number 802, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Hymn number 802, found in the Lutheran Service Book. Please be seated. A couple of uh, brief announcements here again, just a reminder of our voters meeting uh, Tuesday at 7 p.m. Uh, school board is going to bring a person to hire for a teaching position before the congregation, so it's important we have a quorum here uh, for Tuesday. Uh, also, we have uh, cleanup day, 3.30 to 5. That was already announced, and there's some flyers on the walls if you want to read them. And Doug has an announcement uh, about the soup luncheon.
And may the Lord bless all of you, your comings in, your goings out, from this time forth and forevermore, and give you his peace. Amen.